This podcast is part of Mishmash Media. Hey, buddy. Hey, how's it going? Very good. Welcome to Curbcast Season 7. My name is Ivan. And I'm Stephen. And we are back for another season of Curb Your Enthusiasm. Every week, myself and my buddy Steve review an episode of Curb Your Enthusiasm. We do it in chronological order and we review it scene by scene and give our takes, you know, real world comparisons with Curb scenes or maybe just talking about the episode in general. And like I said, we are doing season seven. This is episode one, Funkhouse's Crazy Sister. I feel like an episode that was mildly enjoyable, but I really enjoyed Bam Bam. I think she was a great character and I love, I was just saying to you just before we were about to um, record, mate, that uh, Bam Bam has a a deep voice just like marty makes me laugh yeah she does a very distinct voice yeah the the casting of her and the the character direction of her is great she is very much funk house's crazy sister she i <laughs> I enjoyed that as well because uh, the title of the episode, I think I've made mention of a few episodes in the past where, you know, sometimes the title is a bit vague and you don't really know, like the freak book, what does that mean? Turns mm-hmm. out, obviously, it's about a book full of freaks and it causes um, a lot of uh, trouble for Larry and John McEnroe. But before you Lots watch the episode- for other people. Yeah, exactly. But before you watch the episode, you're just a bit, what does that mean? But this one, straightforward, it's like, well, obviously, Marty's got a crazy sister and she's going to cause some trouble and uh, that's exactly what happens. Yes. And, you, and we learned that you can't uh, offer an empty gesture to the funk houses because they'll take you up on it. Yeah, no, that's a, an ongoing issue in the episode. And I look forward to discussing, you know, we, we often discuss whether Larry's sort of uh, etiquette rules or ideas for life are, you know, relevant or not, or, you know, whether people should agree with, the, you know, whether you would agree with them or not. And I don't know, I've got a few opinions about, you know, the empty promises thing. So I look forward to chatting about that, you know, as it happens throughout the episode. Yeah, me too, mate. Me too. It's going to be awesome. We've had a couple of weeks break uh, just to have a bit of a relaxation. And uh, yeah, we've come back and we're very energized and ready to go. And uh, yeah, we're looking forward to doing or talking about season seven, the Seinfeld season, Steve. I was quite surprised because we've watched episodes one and two, you know, to we're recording tonight. And uh, yeah, we haven't seen the Seinfeld stuff so that must happen uh, later on in the season yeah they do I, I did notice in one or maybe both of the episodes there were very very sh- like quick references to Seinfeld I think they mentioned an episode I can't even remember what they are I just made a mental note of them when I watched them so obviously they're you know just planting a couple of seeds for it to actually become the main storyline through the season but yeah no no real solid you know showing of it in the first two episodes which is interesting because it's you know usually when um you know each season has at least one overarching story you know like larry being adopted or the restaurant or you know the producers they usually start planting the seeds or or getting into that storyline from episode one but they've nothing really solid so far no, no, nothing. I think they wanted to, because um, in the next episode, obviously, Loretta and Larry split up uh, after their one-year relationship. So yeah. I think they kind of wanted to wrap that up. First, yeah. Which kind of makes sense. And then, yeah. and then they'll move on to Seinfeld later. Yeah, I think I think because them getting together was so rushed at the end of season six, I guess they kind of wanted to do like a quick you know, ending to that relationship. It wouldn't have made sense if it was this long. It, it, it just kind of made sense to me that you know it was set up quickly and now it's all over quickly. You know, It just kind of made sense to me. And the gap between season six and seven is nearly two years. And uh, in the in the Curb universe, Larry and Loretta have been together for about a year. That's confirmed in vehicular fellatio next week. Yeah. So, yeah. So, it is like a long time in between drinks, as we say. Yeah. So, I guess in like Curb time, you know, a year is a decent amount of time for a relationship. But in episode time to set up a substantial relationship and end it. And a lot goes on in three episodes. Well, two and a bit episodes. You know, there's cancer and temperatures and all sorts of things. They, you yeah, know, they kind of have to... They kind of have to punch through it pretty quickly to to get Loretta out of the way so they can focus on Seinfeld. But um, yeah, I don't know. Their romance was unexpected, but um, you know, I'm kind of glad it's over in a way. I just think if there was yeah. a long term romance for like an ongoing in terms of episode by episode romance for Larry, especially after just you know ending it with well being left by Cheryl, you know, long term relationship. If it was just in another long term relationship that lasted seasons, it would kind of feel like a wasted opportunity to explore Larry being single. Yes. So yeah, I'm, I'm kind of glad but they we do. We do see that. Yeah, and you know, I really like Loretta as a character, and I liked their brief you know, screen time in relationship terms. But, um, you know, I'm kind of glad that it's over, you know, because Larry being yeah. single, I think is just ripe for, you know, for comedy gold. So Lots of opportunities, lots of options there. Exactly. Yes. 
But anyway, we'll talk about that next week. It's not in this week's episode. No. <laughs> but, uh, yeah. Uh, we do get a revelation about Loretta later in the episode, uh, which is, uh, yeah, we find out she's been diagnosed with cancer after a uh, race between Larry and her doctor to go see her to uh, confirm the biopsy results because in this episode, uh, Larry is told by Jeff that you can't uh, break up with someone if they've been diagnosed with cancer. Basically, yeah. you have to stick with them. So Larry's trying to get out of the relationship before the diagnosis comes. Yeah, he wants to break up with her before the news is delivered. If you That's want right. to deliver us news, you can. We have an email address, curbcastpod at gmail.com. We're on all forms of social media as well. Curbcastpod is our handle. You can check out those links in the show notes. We've got a Patreon account. If you want to support us for a dollar US a month, you can do so and you get to get access to episodes a bit earlier than everyone else, a couple of days earlier. And finally, we uh, would also appreciate if you rated us or review us on your podcast type of choice. Uh, it really helps with search results um, or just spread the word. Tell someone in your life who likes Curb about us. Um, and yeah, that would be fantastic. That would be fantastic. And also just a reminder as well, we are changing our release schedule for episodes now. So we used to release episodes on Wednesday mornings, Australian time, usually about 5.36 in the morning, Australian time. But now we're going to be releasing it around 5.30 a.m. Australian time, but on Fridays. So that should be, I think, Thursday. Oh, so maybe Thursday. Like Thursdays for you for you North Americans there. Yeah. Um, so Thursday. yeah, it won't, be, it won't be Tuesdays anymore for you guys. It'll be Thursdays. Yeah. So, yeah. So this episode episode you probably look at your feed on wednesday this week and be like where's the episode so just letting you guys know this is coming out friday uh, yep. patreon subs you'll get this one uh, a bit earlier than everyone else yeah that's right all right let's do it mate season seven episode one funk houses crazy sister aired in the u.s on hbo on september 20th 2009 and like i did mention that's almost two years after the season six finale the bat mitzvah unbelievable what a what a hiatus in between uh curb seasons i know uh i think from like season nine to ten there was a hiatus of several years but yeah this one i, I don't know the production history i don't know I, I haven't looked into the background as to why there was a delay in production but uh yeah yeah, a nearly two year delay and Curb comes back. Interesting. Yeah, I guess, you know, Larry was at such a point, like, I feel like that this is probably the cultural high point for Curb, you know, in terms of its penetration into pop culture. You know, I remember it being massive around this time, even though I never really got into it. You know, everyone was talking about it. Mm. You know, it just seemed to be, and, and you know, it, it did just end with what we've, with what we think has been the best season so far, season six, and what I think a lot of people would agree, you know, has been the best season so far. And Larry's at a point in his career after smashing it with Seinfeld and doing six awesome back-to-back -back seasons of Curb, you know, he's probably like, you know what, I'm just going to do it as I please, like rather than stick to a, an annual schedule. You know, maybe he just didn't feel like, inspired for a year. Maybe he just wanted some time off. Maybe he thought the Seinfeld storyline would be a good idea, but it took a while to come together because, you know, they're all busy actors and actresses, you know, but he, he wanted to make it happen. So he, he allowed that extra time to make sure that they could, you know, fit it into their schedules. Who knows? But, you know, Larry David doesn't have to answer at 21. If he wants to take 20, 20 years to make a season, you know, go for it. <laughs> Just go for it, yeah. Exactly. <laughs> oh, good for him. Yeah, well, like I said, I, I didn't read about the behind-the-scenes production of Season 7 and, and the reasons, but, uh, yeah, I'm sure it'll be something similar like that. Yeah. And, uh, Stephen, a bit of trivia about the episode. You were saying to me off-air last week that uh, the new season of Curb looks much glossier than uh, last season's, and uh, that's true. This is the first episode in the series filmed in high definition. Yeah, I noticed it straight away. You know, yeah, the, we, Like we the widescreen, it doesn't have like the 4-3 aspect ratio. It's like full HD. Like HD. It's really nice. Yeah, no, it took a little while to get used to, but I actually kind of enjoy it now. You know, yeah, when, so yeah, when there's it, such a big change, you like it's just a bit jarring at first, but I don't mind it. Yeah, it doesn't quite have that. The thing I appreciate about Curb is like, especially the earlier seasons, it kind of has like that almost like camcorder kind of essence. Yeah. It's kind of like, you know, like fly on the wall documentary sort of thing recorded by some amateur, you know, camera. Movie. Yeah. It's, it's a bit it gonzo -y. Looks a lot more professional. Yeah. The, the first six seasons have like a low rent quality to them and I find it quite charming, you know, but rather than go, oh, I don't like it anymore. I just accepted that this is how it looks now. And, you know, once I did, I enjoyed it. Yeah. Yeah. Same here. I mean, it was a bit weird at first, but uh, yeah, no, it does. <laughs> It's a, it's actually better and uh, it does look more high like high production, which is nice. Yeah, and I noticed that it's a lot more not just uh, the, the picture quality is better, but it's it's much more lit. It's very bright. Um, whereas mm. before, you know, the, uh, up until season six, it just had like a more of a dull kind of lower lighting. Whereas this, yeah, is it quite, kind of quite... like the contrast. It was very contrasty, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah and that, yeah. I think that was the most jarring aspect of it. Um, but yeah, like I said, you know, once I just told myself, well, don't don't let it 
affect your what you think of the show and i didn't and yeah i enjoy it <laughs> yeah me too man me too <laughs> and uh bam bam who is marty's sister she's played by Catherine o'hara you've probably seen her in uh, home alone films like that and also in uh, the tv show Shit's creek the recently ended one or the one ended i think a couple of years ago uh yeah she was in that as well so she's uh yeah comedian she's been in many film and tv productions so uh, she's very recognizable nice yeah anyway let's get into it scene one of Funkhouse's crazy sister. Larry is bringing breakfast in bed to an impatient Loretta. She exclaims that the soup that she eating that she is eating is too salty as they begin arguing about the thermostat. She says black people like it warm, like 75 degrees, as Larry says he prefers it at 68 degrees. Leon comes into the room and Larry asks what temperature he likes and he says that they can compromise at 74. Leon says at 74 they might as well sleep outside as he likes 82 degrees as the arguing continues so uh, Loretta claims that black people like it warm the thermostat yeah I, I love I love the fact um, I got no idea but uh, yeah it might not be a scientific fact but you know they're very very firm in that you know this is what black people like and you know anything different is basically sleeping you know in a glacier or something like that well Leon says you might as well sleep outside if you're going at 74 exactly <laughs> so <laughs> yeah yeah where they're from it's not cold really is it is it Louisiana they're from uh, I think so. New Orleans. Um, yeah, I th- yeah, some, yeah. I think I think it is from memory. I know I know the hurricane that they, um, you know, that blew their house away wasn't Hurricane Katrina, but it was definitely no. based on Hurricane, hurricane Irene. I think Hurricane. Yeah, hurricane, I think. was that in Louisiana? Yeah. I, I honestly don't know. In Louisiana, um, yeah, I've kind of forgot about it. <laughs> so yeah, yeah I think somewhere around there, but usually it's quite swampy and, and warm. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it might get cold at night, but I don't think it's um. I don't, yeah, I don't think it's like. Uh, you know, like Michigan cold where there's snow and shit. So I guess they're just used to the warmer weather. The warmer weather. Yeah, but California is, um, that wouldn't get that cold, would it? I don't think no, so. Really. I mean, part up, yeah. you know, up north maybe it gets cold, at, you know, during winter. But yeah, where they are in LA, you know, I don't imagine it gets super cold in winter. Like I've been to LA in October and I remember it kind of being cold-ish, but not, not that bad. You know, just jeans and a hoodie and you're fine. So yeah, but they just must love the warm weather and that's it. That's it. Yeah, <laughs> that is love it, and apparently, yeah, black people love it. Not, I, I look, I have no opinion or idea on that on that theory, but uh, yeah, that's what Loretta claims. So <laughs> good for her. Yeah, good for Leon. Yeah, good, good for them. Whatever, whatever makes you feel comfortable. It's all good. Yeah, and Larry doesn't like it whatsoever. No, 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 no of course. No. Larry walks off as Auntie Ray and the kids walk in the front door. Larry tells the kids not to erase his TiVo shows. That's a nice reference to last. Week. <laughs> as uh, he mentions this to Ray as the kids walk off, she says that there has been another robbery in the neighborhood, as she heard it from one of the neighbours. Larry says he can't stand his neighbours and he'd rather talk to the thieves than the neighbours. <laughs> You can give them things instead of your time. So uh, yeah, Larry they, just uh, Larry doesn't care. He hates his neighbours so much. He'd rather chat to thieves. Yeah, thieves take your stuff, whereas neighbours take your time. And he'd rather right. he can replace stuff, but he can't replace time. That's um, actually a good point. <laughs> it is a good point. But when you're when you're Larry David, that makes sense. But to the rest of the world, that wouldn't make sense. You know, when you're super no. rich and you can just replace. When you're a multi, stuff, multi, multi, multi millionaire. You know, you stuff know, you, can, you can afford to give away a few things. Exactly. Um, you know, and your time's more limited. But um, yeah, I do think it's funny though. <laughs> Yeah, that's uh, good. Yeah, it was just like the delivery of that line. Like it just kind of, it kind of uh, like, you know, sh- not shook me, but it kind of like shocked me a bit. And I was just like, what the hell? You'd rather talk to thieves. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it just kind of, kind of surprised me. Kind of, kind of caught me off guard. <laughs> Ray says that Loretta will be okay no matter what happens with her health because Larry is by her side because we find out that she's had a biopsy and she's waiting on test results as Ray asks about Loretta's biopsy results and Larry says uh, they don't have the answer yet. It should be a couple of days. And uh, Larry is very puzzled by what Ray said because uh, he's thinking, hang on, what do you mean? Like, if Loretta has cancer, you know, like, what am I supposed to do, especially by her side? You kind of, You can kind of see the cogs turning so early in the episode. Hmm. Larry is in Jeff's garage and he's complaining about the thermostat. He's also complaining, uh, comparing Loretta to the evil stepmother in Cinderella and he wants to break up with Loretta. I love how <laughs> Jeff is trying to figure out what he means by Cinderella because Larry's like, yeah, this is like Cinderella. And then Jeff's kind of like trying to put it together. I and didn't catch that. Larry's like, it's the evil, she's like the evil stepmother. And Larry, Jeff's like, how was I supposed to get that? Mm, yeah, how I, was I, I supposed didn't. to figure that out. Yeah, it's a bit, it's a bit, um, a bit vague. Yeah, a bit vague. It was, it was just funny because I just love when Jeff was trying to figure out. He's like, what's Cinderella have to do with Loretta? I, I don't know. Yeah. And Jeff, Larry's like trying to, you know, like explain it to him. And Jeff still doesn't get it for a little bit. I like that. Yeah, no, it's it's a uh, yeah, no, I, I understand why he's a bit confused because he's like, that's I don't know, it's such a vague tie-in to Cinderella. I know it's like because usually you think Cinderella balls or you know midnight glass slippers that sort of thing, but you wouldn't yeah. associate evil stepmother. It's just it's not really a trope that you really 
think of when you think no 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 exactly so anyway larry wants to break up with loretta jeff says that he has to break up with her before the biopsy results because once she is diagnosed with cancer then he needs to be with her you can't break up with someone who has cancer which i kind of understand because you know people who've had cancer like myself uh you kind of need your support network as well so uh, yeah i can imagine loretta if she was diagnosed and larry just left she'd be uh, pretty devastated yeah yeah do you think it makes it like obviously trying to race you know against a doctor's delivery of such horrible news so you can break up you know you can get in there just before the news is delivered to break up with her like that's pretty mm-hmm. pretty awful but do you think like if you i don't know I mean, maybe you can speak to it directly because you've had cancer, but yeah. obviously, you know, support from your your wife and your family and friends, you know, helped you, I imagine helped you immensely. But yeah. would you be, and if you don't want to talk about this because it's too like fucked up to think about it, let me know. I'm just, you know. That's all right. I, I, just, I just don't want to like talk too much about it because, you know, we're talking about Kerb, so <laughs> that's yeah, okay. Yeah. No, no, no. I'm it's just, not that I don't it, want to talk it's about more, it. It's, it's, like not, it's not so much about yourself. It's just more about, you know, we always give our takes on, you know, whether we think Larry's in the right or the wrong or, you know, how bad is what Larry's done? Is it really sort of thing? Does it make it less bad that he breaks up with her before the diagnosis is delivered as opposed to after? You know, even if it's by an hour or half an hour or something, do you know? Do you know what I mean? Like, like if he yeah, breaks, I up think with- by like, yeah, I think by like an hour, no. Yeah. Um, I think it's actually pretty bad if you do it while she's being like you're being tested as well. Like, even yeah, though that's... you might not necessarily have cancer, you be the fact you're getting screened for it, and then they break up with you. That's that's a bit of a kick in the nuts too. You know? Yeah, that, that's that's kind of what I'm getting at. Like, if yeah, if if you broke that's up with good. someone and then three months later they got cancer news, and you know you had no idea, yeah, you, that person probably wishes that their partner was still around. But it's not like they broke up with them like the day before or the day of. You know, a couple of hours. And I don't think, even though Larry's trying to break up with her before the news because he thinks it's less bad than doing it after she gets the news, I don't think there's much of a difference. I, I don't know, think so. I it's think a matter of break like, up. Because it's a matter of like half an hour or an hour or whatever. It's like, even though you technically broke up with her before she knew she had cancer, it's still, it's so, it's so fine that, I don't know, it, it's like, it's the same. It's, it's as fucked up as each other, I think. Yeah, I, I agree. I feel like even being screened for cancer and not necessarily <laughs> being diagnosed with it, I think break breaking up with someone during that phase as well because like that's that's pretty bad because even yeah. like you know waiting for your results is probably the worst you know the and people who've had cancer who are listening to this as well can probably relate to it as well yeah They're probably the scary that's probably the scariest period of all it's yeah. like shit do I have cancer true has it spread you know yeah it's like fuck you know like, how bad is it you know what I mean if I do have it so that's you're true. waiting on you know that life changing news and if someone you know especially someone who you've been with for over a year like Larry they break up with you that could probably you know affect you mentally and uh, it all like I'm, I'm not gonna go too much into it but it, it's also a lot of it is to do with like your positive attitude and you need that support network as well yeah and i feel like if that if he broke up with loretta prior to her biopsy you know even like a couple of days before i think that loretta would have been very distraught and i think that actually would have affected her um recovery as well yeah that's so probably true. would have taken her longer to recover yeah well. yeah yeah it, w- there w- it would have been lingering effects after as well for sure. yeah for sure i didn't think of that but that's very true that, that, that's my take <laughs> yeah no no I, th- I think that's spot on larry says and and this kind of made me cringe when when he said this part larry says he'd rather be in loretta's position than his current one <laughs> oh, <no. laughs> he'd rather be have cancer than fucking break up with someone with it jesus christ oh god he's I, a... I always choked i was i was having a sip of water i almost choked on it when he said that line <laughs> I know, it's like, it's so oh my bad. God. So bad. He'd rather the potential of going through chemo and stuff than do that. I know. I was God. like, that's a bit, that's like dark humor. Oh, yeah. It, oh, it's so scummy, but it's hilarious. It's, it is, yeah, it's funny. It's like dark comedy, yeah. Yeah. Larry suggests pre breakup arrangements. So, you know, like prenuptial agreements, I should say, uh, but except pre breakup agreements when you go out with someone for relationships. Uh, he calls apricots also a low percentage fruit. He goes on a tangent about apricots and he says usually one in 30 apricots are pretty good and the rest are pretty bad. He just <laughs> goes on a tangent, just, just randomly. One of his, you know, Larry David uh, rants. Yeah. Susie walks in and invites Larry to her dinner party. He asks her who is arriving, and Susie says that there's no etiquette to tell people who are coming, and they begin arguing about it. Larry says, I should know who's coming because I'm turning up, and Susie's like, you don't have to know, it's fine. It's like a whole whole thing about it. (laughs) Larry turns to Jeff, and Jeff pretends he doesn't know who's coming. 
as Larry walks off. He's obviously um, trying to defend Susie. Ray is talking to the doctor at the house as Larry walks in. Ray tells Larry that they still don't know anything. He complains... Oh, Larry is talking to the doctor, Dr. Schaefer. Uh, he complains to the doctor about having to feed fish. Uh, Dr. Schaefer wants to talk about Loretta. Larry asks if... If the doctor had to make a Vegas bet, would he pick that she has cancer or not cancer? As in, would she pick for cancer or not cancer? <laughs> as the doctor says he doesn't do that, as her results haven't come back as yet. And he has no idea of Loretta's diagnosis, which is a very valid point. You can't just, you know, you can't just tell people, oh, I have, you know, you possibly have, you know, you have cancer. And, you know, suddenly the biopsy comes back and you're like, no, you don't have cancer. You, know, <laughs> you, can't, you can't scare people like that. Exactly. Um, so the doctor says, no, I'm not going to say anything until we find out. It could be anything. Yeah. So it's a, a very rational call, in my opinion. Yeah. You don't want to be the doctor who either gives someone who deserves good news the bad news, or someone who needs to know the bad news some good news. You know what I mean? Exactly. <laughs> you don't want to make like uh, bad, you know, wrong promises, promises like that. For sure. Uh, especially due to the severity of uh, Loretta's situation. Hmm. Uh, the doctor goes into Larry's fridge and he pours himself a lemonade while he's telling Larry what kind of medicines she needs to have to make her feel better. Larry calls uh, Dr. Schaefer out for his actions. Dr. Schaefer says, that Larry wasn't going to offer him lemonade, even though Larry claims that he was. Dr. Schaefer says that Larry needs to focus on Loretta rather than lemonade as he walks off in frustration. So we find out uh, later on in the next scene, Marty comes in and, and Larry and Marty have a bit of a debate about it. What is your take? Me personally, I don't wouldn't like people uh, going into my fridge to grab stuff. I don't know, unless if it's like, unless we're at like, we're having like a dinner party or something and then maybe someone you know goes to grab a drink or whatever but i don't know if someone just comes over i don't know i, I feel a bit weird um I, I think i'm probably a bit traumatized because one time i when i was about 13 or 14 i went to a friend's house mm. and um their mother was there as well in the kitchen and i went to go grab like a drink and the mother full-on yelled at me oh wow like, how dare you how dare you go into our fridge without asking like she started screaming at me and i was like huh what <laughs> what did i do wow. i was just grabbing a coke <laughs> Yeah, that and would. Even that my would, friend um, was like, uh, "What are you doing, mum?" <laughs> yeah, like, that would. You know, that would make make that would make you be a bit anxious about doing it going forward. Um, yeah, that's probably why I don't like it. But yeah, yeah. I'm probably just traumatized. She's like, "Come on, screaming at me!" I was like, "What the fuck? What a yeah, nice job!" Uh, fair enough. Fair I never enough. went to his house again after that. Yeah, I, I bet. <laughs> I'll see I bet. cool, man. Yeah, I bet. Um, yeah. What about you? What's your take? Uh, you're probably you're probably pretty cool with all that sort of stuff. Uh it depends on the person. Like, if they're a good friend. And I don't know, like I had a friend up from Melbourne a couple of weeks ago who stayed with us for a couple of days. You know, he didn't do it. But if he went to the fridge and just got something to eat, to drink, I'm like, yeah, that's fine. Like he's a close friend. He's staying with us. It's all good. But if it was a stranger or someone I barely knew, I'd feel a bit, I don't know if I'd say something. You know, I don't think I would care that much that I'd actually say something in front of them. But I'd, I'd definitely feel a bit uncomfortable. But if it's a, if it's a really close friend or, you know, if it's a party or, you know, if it depends, it, it's so situational for me. What about a doctor who's made a house call like Dr. Shaker? Oh, no, no, no. Like, you know, that that's a stranger. Okay. I don't mind people asking like, hey, can I have a drink or can I have some water? Or even if someone said, hey, can I get something to eat? I'm really hungry. It's like, yeah, that's fine. You know, like I'm not, you know, it doesn't bother me. But yeah, just assuming that it's okay when they don't really know you and they don't know your, it's not just rude, it's quite assumptive that you assume that yes. they would be okay with it. I think that's mm, yes, that's kind yes. of like another layer of it that, you know, is a bit, you know, inappropriate. So, Never yeah. No, 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 no. I, to answer your question, I think it's just depends on the person and the situation. You know, if, if people were over and we're having like a party, if we were having a party and, you know, it was like a relaxed environment and everyone was just doing their thing and, you know, there were people there I barely knew and they just went to the fridge to like get their drinks or, you know, get something to eat or whatever. I'd be like, yeah, that's fine. But if it was a, if it was a, a stranger in my house on their own and it wasn't like a, a relaxed environment, yeah, I'd probably feel a bit awkward about it. Yeah, fair enough. I'm probably in the same boat. Look, like I said, if like close friends turn up and we're having like dinner yeah. or something. I don't mind if they go on the fridge. Yeah. I'm probably in the same boat as you, actually. No, yeah. But if it's like, yeah, an acquaintance or, you know, someone I don't know. Like, say if an electrician came over and did some work and then went to my, raid my fridge, I'd be like... Oh, yeah, no, that's no. just... <laughs> it's like, what the fuck? <laughs> and I think as well because they're in their... <laughs> They're there in their professional capacity. So it kind of adds yeah. like a bit more of a, you know what I mean? Like Dr. Shaver's is there, you know, as a doctor sort of thing. Like he's not just there yes. for a social visit. So I think it makes it even more awkward. He does. Yeah, yeah I know. Yeah. And he just grabs a lemonade and just starts pouring it. Yeah. Because it's like, to Larry. yeah, it's like, even though you're in my house, you're still here as a professional. You're not just here, yeah. you know, as a, as a friend or even, yeah, as an acquaintance. So I think that. I love how the camera cuts to Larry's face. He's like so puzzled. And then it cuts to like the actual lemonade can being poured into the glass. <laughs> Yeah. It's kind of like from Larry's perspective. It's like, what the fuck is this? Yeah. It's a good shot. Yeah. <laughs> no, it was, I, I did like that too. 
Yeah, he's just like, it's from his perspective. He's yeah. Like, he just doesn't know what to say. <laughs> Marty turns up and he greets Dr. Schaefer, who's leaving. Dr. Schaefer walks off. Larry explains to Marty what happened. Marty says that taking liquids from the fridge is acceptable, but nothing more than that. Larry asks how Marty's sister Bam Bam is going, and Marty says that she's out of the mental hospital. He asks if Larry can visit her at 1 p.m. today, uh, after Larry asks if uh, to do any favours as an empty gesture. So Larry, he says, like, look, I'm happy if you need anything, any favours let me know and marty takes him up on the offer straight away he says yep. come go visit bam bam at one p one o'clock today <laughs> <laughs> he adds that larry needs to look at bam bam's shoes before looking at her in the eyes larry reluctantly accepts as he says that uh, he will meet marty's at jeff's for the dinner party marty turns around and he asks what's happening at jeff's and larry <laughs> says that there's a dinner party marty gets frustrated and he says that he wasn't invited so uh there you go so marty wasn't planning to go and uh larry yeah that's why larry wanted to know who was coming so mm. larry kind of let it out of the bag was yeah. like what are you talking about what's happening at jeff's yep <laughs> and larry's like oh <laughs> what have yeah, I done? <laughs> done it again larry done it again larry jeff and bam bam are sitting on a couch at marty's house they're making small talk and like i mentioned at the start she has a raspy voice like marty and bam bam is played by Catherine o'hara bam bam says that she met a celebrity a female celebrity but she won't reveal who it is as she tries to get larry and jeff to guess who it is they make random guesses i love how larry says as a joke hannah montana and then Bam Bam's like, no, <laughs> it's someone famous. And we, the, the thing that irks me about this scene is we never know who the famous person is. Mm. It's just so annoying. It's like the mystery. Just like Julia Roberts. No, she's like a really good actress. She keeps saying Julia Roberts. <laughs> <laughs> that thing is one of those unanswered questions. Yeah. yeah. It's like, who was the actress? Yeah. Bit of, bit of mystery. I'm going to say Mary, maybe if I had to take a guess. Probably Meryl Streep. So okay. Yes. Yeah, yeah. No, that, that that seems fitting. Meryl Streep or yeah, I think that's I think that's probably that's a really good guess. Yeah, because she's, you know, a very highly decorated actress. Won many yeah. Oscars and nominated for many as well. She's so one of the best of all time. Sense. Yeah, you're one of the one of the best, yeah, for sure. For sure. But best actors, you know, in general. Yeah, definitely. For sure. She begins to break out into song, which terrifies Larry and Jeff. Larry asks for food or drink if she hasn't, but Bam Bam says they don't have anything. And Larry's like, Oh, you don't you don't have any food or drink. Nothing. <laughs> Anything at all. <laughs> Larry excuses himself to go to the bathroom, and Jeff says that he will go to the bathroom after Larry. Uh, Jeff and Bam Bam continue to sit on the couch as they look at each other, you know, casually. Marty! Uh, Nicole Kidman? No! Julia Roberts? No! She's uh, a, a multi, multi-talented. Oh, I know, I know. Hannah no. Montana! No! You're not even I'm trying! I'm trying! The Kardashians! What? No! You know who it is! Do you have any idea? No. no. Yeah, you do. <sighs> it's not inside the box. It's not inside the box. There it is! Larry goes to the fridge to look for some food. The scene cuts to him. Oh, and, and he grabs some, uh, looks, appears to be some kind of cold cuts. He takes them out of the fridge and puts them on the kitchen bench. <laughs> the scene cuts to Larry returning to the to the lounge room or heading in that direction as Jeff and Bam Bam aren't there. He hears Bam Bam moaning in a bedroom. Larry walks up the stairs and he goes in front of the door and he hears Jeff and Bam Bam both having sex and he runs off in horror. <laughs> She's like, love me. What did she say? Like, love me, fat boy, or something like that. I think she says, fuck me, fat boy. Fuck me, fat boy. That's right. Yeah. Love, me, love me. As if she would say, love me. <laughs> nah, she'd say, fuck me, fat boy. Exactly. It sounds like very, like, animalistic sex, didn't it? Yeah. Very yeah. tribal. Yeah, I think it's, <laughs> yeah, I think it's very primal. And, uh, yeah, very primal. That's the word. Yeah, very, yeah. very primal. Yeah, yeah. No, I think it's a bit, um, yeah, a bit, a bit, bit kinky. I wouldn't be surprised if she stuck a finger up his bum or something like that. <sighs> Who knows? Who knows? Maybe. Who knows what Jeff's into? But uh, yeah, this is the first time we've seen Jeff commit adultery on the screen. It's the second time it's been implied that he's committed adultery on the show. But uh, we actually, well, we don't see the action, but we uh, we hear it behind the door. Yes, exactly. First uh, live uh, affair that Jeff's had on the show. Mm -hmm. Larry and Jeff are back in the car. Larry is calling Jeff out for having sex with a mental patient. Jeff explains that Bam Bam was bored and he offered an empty gesture to her, which led to sex. And Larry says, you can't make an empty gesture to a Funkhauser as they'll take you up on it. <laughs> so, yeah, Bam Bam, uh, yeah, I'm guessing Jeff probably said, well, I'll do anything you want. And Bam Bam's like, let's fuck. And you know, yeah. we've seen Jeff. He, he's always uh, got eyes for other women besides his wife. And, uh, yeah, he's always his eyes are always going in another direction. And, uh, yeah, he, he sees 
use on the opportunity. Yeah. <laughs> and Larry's disgusted that he had sex with a mental patient. Yeah, a bit ableist there, I think. Oh, just a little bit. Unless he's coming from a place of like he's disgusted that maybe, you know, she was taken – maybe he feels that she was taken advantage of, that she's not of sound – I think that's what he meant. Yeah, okay. Well, that I, I would hope so. Like I don't think Larry would begrudge Jeff – having sex with someone just because they were, you know, mentally ill. Maybe it's more so that, you know, he thinks that she's not of sound mind to, like, to, to make that decision. But then again, Stephen, I mean, you did mention, like, um, you know, was it wrong for Jeff? Like, did Jeff take advantage of Bam Bam? But Bam Bam came from a mental institution. So I guess, uh, I guess you could say Jeff did take advantage of someone with mental issues. I guess so. But, I mean, if she was, you know, if she left a mental institution, she might have been deemed mentally sound. So, you know, and just because she, you know, maybe struggling with mental health doesn't mean she's incapable of making that decision. So, I don't know. Hard to tell. It, regardless of, you know, whether Jeff took advantage he of her, he took advantage of the opportunity, I think is what is really important. And he did the wrong thing. He cheated on his wife. Yeah, for sure. Okay. <laughs> that make, that That's fair. At Susie's dinner party, Larry arrives. Jeff yells at Larry for telling Marty about the party, and they turned up uh, him, Marty, and his wife, as well as Bam Bam. <laughs> Jeff says that if he knew that the funk houses were coming, he would have left town. <laughs> Larry laments the party invite rules. As Larry spots Dr. Schaefer, who is looking after Loretta, Larry goes up to Dr. Schaefer and asks who the man next to him is, and he says that that is his boyfriend, Sam. And Larry greets them, and he says uh, he's surprised that Dr. Schaefer is gay. <laughs> He didn't expect it at all. And mm. uh, Dr. Schaefer asks, why is he surprised? And Sam begins to get offended as well. <laughs> Larry says straight out, he thinks that Sam looks slightly gay, but Schaefer doesn't look gay at all. <laughs> they both get offended. And Larry begins to apologize. And Schaefer says he does not accept Larry's apology. As Marty <laughs> grabs Larry to speak to him and uh, Schaefer and Sam get really, really offended. Uh, Marty asks Larry what he did to Bam Bam. And Larry's like, oh, I, I didn't do anything. And Marty's like, her spirits are very high since you, voted, since you visited. <laughs> <laughs> he calls Jeff over and tells him the good news. And Jeff goes, oh, that's fantastic. And Marty says Bam Bam was singing, I love the fat boy after they left. <laughs> and Jeff and Larry are like, oh, I wonder why. Jeff claims that they just sat and talked and that's it. Marty asks if they can go visit again. And the duo say that they'll they'll see as they are called for dinner. So uh, yeah, obviously Bam Bam, uh, Jeff having sex with Bam Bam made her feel really good. And she sang, I love the fat boy all afternoon. Yeah, it, it's probably been a while if she was uh, away for quite a while. You know, it might have been her first fuck in a while. And, you know, I can understand why it would feel good. <laughs> I love the fat boy. <laughs> <laughs> nice. And Marty Marty seems very happy as well. You can see he's very, uh, very cheery. Yeah. Yep. No, everyone's, yep. <laughs> everyone's, everyone's very happy. Yeah. Everyone is at the dinner table as Bam Bam winks at Jeff subtly. He subtly winks back. They continue to give gestures to each other, each one becoming more lewd as uh, Jeff is awkwardly replying back while making sure that Susie isn't looking on. Bam Bam admits to the group that Larry cleaned out Marty's fridge as there was no cold cuts left. Dr. Schaefer calls Larry out for his hypocrisy. <laughs> yeah, she says mm -hmm. there was no turkey and lemonade left in the fridge and Dr. Schaefer calls him out for being a hypocrite. <laughs> Marty joins in on the argument as everyone begins arguing at the table. Bam, Je Bam Bam yells that Jeff was in bed with her, which Jeff vehemently denies. Susie gets angry and they all begin to scream at Jeff and say, shame on you. And Susie says you took advantage. How can you take advantage of a mentally ill girl <laughs> as Bam Bam walks off? Jeff is defending himself. Larry is defending Jeff. And eventually Susie comes around and believes Jeff as she says that only Susie is crazy enough to sleep with someone like Jeff. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Jeff certainly dodged a bullet, didn't he? He did. He did. He, uh, yeah, it was just lucky that no one, well, no one believed her. You know, or if they did, uh, it was quickly put into doubt by the fact that convinced that she's crazy. And then Larry was defending him too, which kind of helped. Yeah, yeah. Marty says that he will have to take Bam Bam back to the institution, and Jeff agrees with this. You know, Jeff wants her gone. <laughs> it's just like, yes, that's a very good idea. Put her back. <laughs> Put her back in the institution. Larry receives a call on his cell phone to go pick up Loretta's medication. He says he'll come back. Dr. Schaefer gets upset at Larry because he said he thought that uh, Larry was going to go get the medication earlier. Larry says that he got busy and he wasn't able to do it. He says to Susie that he'll come back. Susie gets angry and tells him not to come back because they haven't even served entrees yet. And Larry says, don't worry, I'll be back. And Susie's <laughs> like, you're not coming back. Do not come back. <laughs> he gets very, very angry. She has this uh, etiquette when it comes to dinner parties. Yeah, you know, you can't tell who's coming. Yeah, almost like Larry-esque in terms of her rules. Her rules, like her unwritten rules about dinner parties. You know, if, if you leave, yeah. you're leaving for good for the night, you can't come back. 
stuff like that. Yeah, it just reminds me, you know, it reminds me of like the strict kind of rules that Larry would have about, you know, maybe not dinner parties, but definitely something. Definitely something, yeah. We, we, we've seen this in several situations. We've seen several instances of Larry talking about uh, his way of doing things, even though they're not necessarily the right way. So this is uh, another example, but except it's Susie's opinion. Yeah, you know, she's, she's you know, that's her thing. Dinner parties are the one thing that she is very strict about. I know. She just really, uh, she's very particular about them, isn't she? Mm-hmm. I'm so glad you were able to join us. I'm so glad you... Still have food in your fridge considering Larry's around. What is that? What do you mean? Larry likes to clean our fridges like he did today at Marty's house. What? You were into our fridge, uninvited, right? That's ridiculous. Oh, then might you explain the whereabouts of the freshly sliced deli packaged turkey? I don't even eat turkey. The it's mustard, right. yellow mustard in a glass jar, huh? and the lemonade soda. And what? So oh, lemonade. lemonade. Oh, right. Yeah. So you're a hypocrite, too, because oh, yeah, I had lemonade yeah, yeah. at your I, house, and you threw, pardon me, a shit fit. Are you kidding? She's emotionally unstable. Do you believe a word this woman says? You know, I don't mind if you take liquid, but when you take regular food... I have a problem. Larry's in the car on the phone to Ray. He asks her what restaurant in Santa Monica Loretta likes, and Ray uh, and she asks if she can get Loretta to confirm the restaurant. Ray says that Loretta needs to rest, and then Larry begins to say, "What do you mean rest? She's not asleep, is she? You can still be on the phone and rest. You can still be awake and rest." <laughs> and Ray's like, "He, she needs to rest," and just hangs up the phone. <laughs> Larry arrives at a restaurant called Brentwood. The hostess says that he has a reservation under the name Larry David, and he says, "Oh, really? I, I, I don't remember booking." Uh, he spots <laughs> Cheryl and Wanda Sykes at the table. Uh, he walks over and greets them, and Wanda is very happy to see him. So uh, we've seen Wanda uh, in this scene. Wanda is very uh, admiring of Larry because he is with a black woman. He, uh, she even, you know, she praises him. She calls him his brother. She says that she's nominated him for an NCAA Image Award, which is like um, an African American like entertainment award. <laughs> I, I googled. Mm. So yeah, yeah, she's really, she's really into the fact that Larry is with a uh, a black woman, and uh, because prior to that, Wanda always viewed Larry as a racist yeah you know she thinks he's really turned a corner <laughs> and she's like yeah he, he does and she's like you know little wayne and then larry's like yeah me and him are close <laughs> little wayne the rapper <laughs> little wayne yeah little wayne <laughs> how very 2000s eh? little wayne little wayne I know. when you had that and pop when he was popular back then um, yeah cheryl cheryl invites uh larry to join them for dinner larry asks about glenn the uh, no fly underwear guy how that's all going cheryl says that it didn't work out they all complain about how dark the restaurant is as they're trying to read the menus as they can't read them larry cheryl cheryl suggests that her and larry go outside to read the menu and wanda waits there Larry and Cheryl are sitting outside the restaurant reading the menu and they say that they miss each other. She laments about Larry doing nothing and staying home most of the day and that she appreciated Larry when he was working on Seinfeld as he was working very hard and always very busy. So here you go. Here's the uh, here's the precursor, Stephen. To uh, this is this is the prelude to uh, the Seinfeld yeah. uh, plot. Yep, this is where. Yeah, no, I, like I said at the top of the episode, I remember a Seinfeld reference and this is it. This is it in this episode. So there you go. And we do find out later on the, uh, in uh, later episodes that Larry is doing the Seinfeld reunion f- to win back Cheryl. So uh, yeah, maybe mm. we haven't seen anything in episodes one or two, but maybe in episode three, he probably brings it up as well. And uh, yeah, yep. so we kind of see like the seeds being planted for this uh, for this particular story arc. Yeah, for sure. Mm, yeah, very interesting. Yeah, she she loved the working Larry because she's like, you were always in the house all day and I'd see you all the time. 24-hour Larry, no good. <laughs> and Larry's like, yeah, what do you need? Like maybe like three, four hours a day, Larry? <laughs> that's that's all you need? Mm-hmm. Yeah, 24-hour Larry is just too much. Yeah. <laughs> Which is much. fair enough. Even 24-minute even Larry, I feel, is too much. Yeah, yeah, 20, 24 seconds. 24, se- 24 milliseconds, indeed. <laughs> that's uh, that's uh, just just looking, glancing over at Larry and turning around. That's just that, that's enough. That's, yeah, more, just, that's more than enough. That's just, that's more brief, than you need in a lifetime for a fictional Larry. Brief eye contact, you know. Brief eye, yeah, that's right. Brief eye contact across the room. That's that's enough. That's right. A subtle glance, exactly. <laughs> and then and then a quick look away. That's right. That's right. Yeah, that for fictional Larry, I'm sure real Larry is not as insane. <laughs> oh no no no, he's real Larry is wonderful. Larry receives a call as Ray says Dr. Schaefer is on the way with Loretta's test results and Larry tells Cheryl he has to go as he heads to his car. Larry is crazily driving home and he's stuck at a red light. He sees Dr. Schaefer in the car next to him and Schaefer hasn't noticed that it's Larry. Larry speeds off to get ahead of him. Larry arrives home. He parks in the driveway and he sees Bam Bam in the driveway. She tries to grab Larry as she accuses him of lying about her and Jeff. As they're having a confrontation, Larry is trying to get in past her to go in the door. 
they witness a burglary across the street. So a robber jumps over a wall and jumps into a car and drives off. <laughs> and uh, they can't believe it. They're stunned. Marty comes over, and seconds later, the police turn up reporting a burglary. Uh, Larry says that Bam Bam will give a statement as she saw the incident. Marty claims that Bam Bam is not well enough to do a report as Marty takes Bam Bam home. The police officer asks for Larry's statement as Dr. Schaefer walks in the front door. So Larry was trying to tell the cops that Bam Bam will do the statement so Larry can just, you know, jump into the front door and, you know, mm-hmm. speak to Loretta first. And I'll try, at least try and try and break up with her first. And uh, Dr. Schaefer got the upper hand. Mm. Even though he wasn't in the race, it was, it was a one-horse race, so to speak. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, the Schaefer was just going to go do his job. Mm. Interesting how it's at night. He turns up. He turns up like after the dinner. That's that's interesting. Unless if uh, maybe he's just like he's one of those really highly paid doctors who just turn up anytime. I don't know. It's just I just found that really interesting. You don't get too many house calls, you know, at night for uh, for a biopsy. Yeah, that's weird. Yeah, I mean, I've gotten a doctor over at night, but they're like the after hours doctors. But this, you know, this is not just a general call. So yeah, I don't know. Maybe he's just really dedicated to his patients. Oh, he must be, yeah, yeah. And I'd imagine he gets paid pretty well. He's probably like one of those kind of private, you know, doctors for like celebrities. Yeah. Like so, you know, they pay him really good yep. money and he turns up whenever whenever the, the client wants. So that kind of makes yeah. sense. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's something no, that, that they he probably could have come over the next day to, you know, tell, to find out about, but, uh, you know, to tell them. But uh, no, he, he insisted to, to tell her tonight. Interesting. Mm-hmm. Hmm. I don't know. I just found that, found that really strange because obviously like something as serious as cancer, like, yeah, being told at night, I don't know, just, it's just really odd, that's all. <laughs> just, yeah, yeah, no, I was no, trying to no, like, figure I, it out. I was like, why is he there? No, I agree. Sense. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Dr. Schaefer walks out of the bedroom as Leon, Ray, and Larry are waiting in the hallway. He tells them that Loretta has cancer. Larry feels faint and he almost collapses. Uh, and, and obviously not because Loretta has cancer, but more for the fact that he has to stick with Loretta now that she's been diagnosed. He can't, mm-hmm. he can't get out of this relationship. That's why he's fainting. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Ray and Leon try and grab Larry to comfort him, and Ray asks Schaefer if she can walk into the bedroom to comfort her, and Schaefer says yes. Dr. Schaefer gives Larry a list of things Loretta will need, and he says that it's going to be a very long, hard road, possibly two, three, maybe even four years of treatment. Wow, that's <laughs> a, that's a long time. Even like two years, that's a long time for treatment. Yeah. It's fucking yep. huge. Four, yeah. And, she, he's, and Larry's like up to four years. And you go, and she goes. He's like, you have. To, uh, Dr. Schaefer's like, you have to be there with her all the time. But what about mm. if I want to do a round of golf? No rounds of golf, Larry. No golf. <laughs> no rounds of golf. Yeah. Just one round of golf. <laughs> Nine, not, a get... few holes of golf. Nope. Yeah. Nope. Can't do any of those things. <laughs> yeah, he's trying to get something, but no. <laughs> no, nothing at all. Uh, Schaefer, Dr. Schaefer says within four years she could be back to normal. Larry says, and he says that Larry won't have time for leisure activities like golf. <laughs> uh, Dr. Schaefer begins rattling off things that Loretta may experience uh, with her treatment as Leon comforts Larry. Larry kind of zones out as he's very puzzled about the whole thing. And uh, the end credits and the end music plays, and that's the end of the episode. Hmm. Yeah, so uh, there you go. So very uh, big revelation about Loretta, and uh, yeah, Larry is kind of kind of in deep now. He can't he can't get out. It's too late. Even though it would have been horrible if you broke up with her just before her diagnosis, that would have been terrible. Yeah. <laughs> so he's 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 stuck now. He's in there. Yeah. No, he's. I I thought that. Yeah. I I, I kind of like the fact that he was stuck in it. You know, like I, I was expecting him to get in there just before the breakup, and then him wanting to break up with her causes her to break up with him because she's like, "What are you yeah. doing?" You know, oh um, yeah, he, that's you know, right. Yeah, yeah. Like, you know, like I, that's kind of how I thought it would play out. But um, the fact that he's kind of stuck and you don't know how it's going to turn out, I think uh, I think it was a good choice. It it was different to what I thought. Yeah, I think so too. I like the fact when he just like almost collapses, not because of the fact that she has cancer, but the fact that he's in he's in in the relationship now. Yeah, probably but Ray and Leon play. think that he's collapsed because of uh, the diagnosis. Yeah, he's probably in a bit of shock too because he can't play golf. No, yeah, that too. Yeah, it, it's all about himself. Oh, totally. <laughs> don't worry about Loretta. So, so yeah. selfish. You, um, you know what it kind of reminds me of? You know, this whole thing um, with like Larry and Loretta and stuff. And even even um, my wife, she was watching this, these episodes with me as well. She turned to me and says, this is like when George tried to break up with Susan, isn't it? Exactly. In Seinfeld. Same yep. deal. Same yep. situation. Larry's stuck. And yep. we, we see we see in vehicular fellatio the next episode that he tries everything to get out of the relationship. <laughs> Exactly. Even in so, um, yeah. even in Seinfeld, when Elaine uh, is going out with that older guy who has a heart attack, you know, on on top of him, on top of her. Sorry. Oh yeah. no, sorry. Is it when he was at? I think he's at Jerry's house. 
Jerry he, Jerry's a palmer, yeah, and he and they have yeah, you know, like making out or something, and he has like a stroke or a, a stroke. I think. Yeah, that's right, that's yeah. right. And he's you know stroke. he's he needs he needs some care, and Elaine's like you know she she wants to hang around long enough to not be a scumbag, but she doesn't want to hang around too long, and she's like so um you know she mm-hmm. she broaches the awkward topic of breaking up that's um, right so it's a very it's a, it's a nice larry david trope in, in some yeah way. you know like so we see larry's kind of in the george situation with susan yeah definitely kind of definitely it just it's just funny how my wife turned around and said it she's like yeah it's like this isn't it and i was like yeah sort of yeah, yeah you married <laughs> so, a keeper there oh i sure did yeah I, I, well, <laughs> absolutely 100 percent. i did anyway that was funk house's crazy sister um i give it three larry's out of five i mean like i said before there was some funny moments but it was just like a setup episode really i mean you know the fact that loretta and larry have been together for over a year and loretta's been diagnosed now so that'll add some tension in the next episode i, I see this as more of like a setup episode i do hope that we do see bam bam later in the season maybe hopefully like we don't know we haven't watched after season two uh episode two of season seven uh but hopefully i'm hoping she turns up and like outs jeff to everyone i don't know i'm just hoping for it yeah <laughs> i'm hoping jeff gets his come up and see what he's done because he's he did a terrible thing yeah no she's too good of a character does not kind of like the blacks last season like you know if she's in two or three episodes uh i think that'll be a good amount you know just tastefully used uh, rather than um, you know becoming like a, a main secondary character if she's just in maybe one or two more episodes i think that would be really good yeah yeah well we'll see what happens how many larry's do you give it out of five uh, i give this one two and a half okay. i didn't yeah. really like it that much well there was a lot of it i didn't like there were a few things that i really liked bam bam for sure the storyline with jeff you know and the dinner party scene i thought were really funny yeah um you know larry racing against the clock against the diagnosis i thought was probably top top or bottom five depending on how you look at it um scumbag larry moves or, or ideas and um, the funny thing is dr schaefer wasn't in on the race either it was just like exactly casually driving over yeah yep um you know i thought that was probably yeah top or bottom five larry moments along with like stealing flowers from marty's mum's memorial and you know trying to retrieve a golf club from a dead man's coffin and yes, you know, yes. Marty's uh, you dad, know not, yeah. not listening to his wife while she's sort of like spilling her guts when she thinks she's going to die. You know, he's 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 done some pretty scummy things and I think this is up there or down there with the worst. With Yeah, for sure. Down the there, I guess you'd say. The worst. Down the worst, the worst, worst or up there with the best. Same difference. Yeah. But yeah, I, I just overall, I just, I don't know, something, something was missing. Uh, I can't really put my finger on it. I do think as well, even though I, like I said earlier in the episode, you know, I did tell myself, don't let the change of, you know, the the, the visual style and the, you know, the increased clarity and, and the brightness, like change it, uh, you know, change my enjoyment of it. And I tried really yeah. hard. I think though, because I was so like jarred by the, by the initial episode, I don't think I could let go of that completely. And I think maybe that's like bringing it down by half a star. Sure. Just, you know, that's my problem. That's not the show's problem. But, you know, either still two and a half or three stars, I think. Yeah, pretty average episode, but decent for a setup episode. You know, it hints at Seinfeld. You, you know, it sets up the the, the cancer storyline. It's, yeah, it does what it needs to do. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, it sets up for, I, I think, vehicular fellatio. That's next week's episode. I think it's a much better episode. Yeah, um, totally. Yeah, totally. And, and and it is like a curb classic, apparently, from what I've read. It's like in the top tens of like lists and stuff. So it's pretty pretty high up there and I can see why. Uh, yep. Yeah, that kind of sets up that two that two episode arc between Loretta and Larry as well. Yeah. Uh, that gets resolved, obviously, at the end of next week's episode. But, uh, yeah, there are a few things to look forward to, a few seeds that have been planted for the rest of the season, which is nice. For sure. Anyway, that was Curbcast Season 7, Episode 1. Thank you so much for listening. It's great to be back after a two-week rest. Uh, and just a reminder, this episode, uh, these episodes are now going to be released on Fridays, uh, Australian time, as uh, Friday mornings, I should say, uh, instead of Wednesday mornings. So you're probably getting this on Friday or Thursday for you Americans out there, and you're probably thinking, and why is this so late this is the standard time now so expect it uh, just before your weekend so you can listen to it on the weekend or on your way to work on thursday or friday whatever however you listen to it anyway we'll be back next week for vehicular fellatio my name's ivan and i'm Stephen. not the actual not the act rather the episode of curve <laughs> don't worry gang <laughs> yeah it'll be a it'll be a five to ten minute episode and then you'll hear a car crash and that'll be it all right we'll see you next week take care Thanks for listening. This podcast is part of Mishmash Media, an independent podcast network. Follow us on social media at Mishmash Media AU or support us on Patreon. All those links are in the show notes.